Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our tutorial on G2 character creation in Draw Plus. In the first part of the tutorial, what we did is we assembled this zero degree angle profile character on the left here. I showed you how to replace the body parts, uh, replace the naming, uh, align the pivot points, and set all the uh, body parts in position there. And then we exported that uh, via Flash into Crazy Talk Animator for a single angle profile character. Now in this tutorial, I'm not going to repeat the same process. You can see I already have the uh, 315 degree character already assembled here. We're just going to export this directly into Crazy Talk Animator. I'm not going to bother going through the process of replacing the sprites and everything again because it's essentially the same procedure. You probably just don't want to see that over again. So what I'm going to do is just zoom out a little bit here first. And you can see that we actually don't have any of these angle profiles set. We only have the 315 degree and the zero degree. Now because this character is symmetrical, what Crazy Talk Animator will automatically do is it'll take this data from the 315 degree angle profile and it'll mirror it in Crazy Talk Animator to create the 45 degree angle profile. So even though we've only replaced two angles, we will have a kind of a pretty functional character for at least the front facing actions anyways. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the layers of the 315 degree angle profile. I'll zoom in a little bit here. And you can see that um, obviously the uh, the left side, uh, the, the feet and the uh, arms and everything are above the torso and above the right hand side. If we take a look at the layers here. You can see that we have the uh, you know left thigh in front of the right thigh, uh, left shank in front of the right shank, uh, right forearm in front of the, or rather right uh, left foot in front of the right foot. And it really depends on your character. You can actually just follow the template, uh, the body template layer order. Uh, but it really depends on your character. If your character is like unique in some way, you may want to adjust the layers. So there's really no right way to do it. Uh, but if your characters look similar to the uh, Crazy Talk Animator default characters, you'll probably want to follow the order that's set around, that's set out in the template already. Uh, so another thing to keep in mind is when you're creating your characters in these uh, angles at 315 degrees, 45 degrees, uh, 225, etc., you don't want to create them with perspective. So what, a, what an artist would normally do in this case is because the left foot is in front of the right foot, uh, the, there may be a little bit of distance between the two feet, so they set the right foot a little bit shorter maybe, a little bit further behind, a little bit smaller, just to create that sense of perspective. But when you're creating your character in Draw Plus uh, or Flash, you don't want to do this because what will happen is Crazy Talk will automatically create the sense of uh, depth uh, for your character, the sense of perspective, uh, when you're animating your character. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So let's go ahead and export this character. I'm going to go up to uh, File, and we're going to go Export. Export as a Flash file. And let's just export this as a, uh, let's call it three angle. And in our Draw Plus white paper folder, we'll go ahead. And once that exports, we're going to go over to Crazy Talk Animator here. And let's bring in a uh, actor. Let's bring in our uh, default uh, dummy here again. And here we go. So what I'm going to do is go into the Character Composer right away and show you that there's uh, no funny stuff going on. This guy is completely naked in all directions. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and import that flash file. So you can see we have the three angle flash right here. Go ahead and open that. And again, uh, I mentioned this before, we don't want to keep any of these settings, so I'm just going to press OK. And we will Shazam have a complete, complete character, at least from three angle profiles. So let's take a look at him. Uh, you can see we have the 45 that's been mirrored from the 315. Uh, so even though we only completed the two angles, we have a three angle profile character. So again, the first thing we wanna do is go over here to confirm multi-angle settings. And again, we can update this later on. So we'll just press okay. And now you can see that uh, we have that sense of perspective there that's uh, been built in. Um, that's why you don't wanna have the perspective in your character, uh, in your character template, because Crazy Talk Animator adds that in. And everything looks okay. So let's take this guy into the stage and test out some animations on him. Uh, one thing you can see right away is that he kind of has an issue with his stomach. There's a really big line going through his stomach. So the reason for that is because we need to do some adjustment for the character masking. And I'm going to go over here to the Runtime Composer to fix that. Uh, you can see here, if you go to the Body tab and you go to the Joint Mask tab, let's take a look at our stomach right here. You can see it's a little bit small for the area it's supposed to cover. So what I want to do is expand this, and you can see that as I do, that area, or that, rather that line will disappear. Now let's try this at other angles as well. So for example, if I take my, uh, leave the Runtime Composer, select my character, 
use the right bracket key, you can see we have the same problem at this angle profile as well. Now you can you can do this all in the uh, character composer, um, but I'm just going to show you how to do it with the runtime composer first of all. So again, let's make sure every angle profile is uh, adjusted there. And there we go. Just expand it a little bit, not too difficult. All right, so our character is good to go. And let's set him to the zero degree profile and apply an animation to him. So I'm going to go to animations here. Uh, in the motions uh, animations section, I'm going to choose a talking animation. And let's choose this explain animation right here. Now take a look at this animation. Uh, it looks not bad, but there's a couple of things that we could improve. And I'm going to show you uh, what those are right away here. So the first one is take a look at his knee uh, right about this frame right here. There's a little bit of a, a black line that's showing through. And that again is a masking issue. So this is where the runtime composer comes in really useful uh, when you're applying animations and you want to make adjustments right away uh, without having to go into that character composer. So we can just expand this, uh, you know, knee masking area right there. And we're good to go. And let's take a look. Let's play back. So now you see the issue is no longer there. We're all good for the uh, masking on the knee. One final thing that you may want to adjust, it really depends on your animation, it depends on your character as well, but take a look at my character's uh, arm here. Now you can see that his arm is a little bit in a, in a weird position. Uh, it looks a little bit strange. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I mean here. On the right hand side there's kind of a, a black line that goes through his arm. Uh, we can adjust this through masking, but one simple way to adjust this is because every character will be different and every animation will be different, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. And one way is simply by adjusting the layers. So what I'm going to do is for this animation, I'm going to select my layers editor right here. And you can see by the layer editor on the right hand side, I'm going to select my right upper arm. And then I'm going to go ahead and send to the back. And I'm going to send it to the back of my upper torso. So I'm going to select the upper torso. And you can see if I'm, if I'm on frame one, that'll change the order right away. And we're good to go. So let's go ahead and play that back and see that now we have the right arm behind the torso and there's no sort of weird arm clipping issue right there. We could also put it in front of the arm at a different time, uh, at a different point in the timeline. That's just one way that you can kind of fix certain issues. So if you get a character, um, whether it be from the marketplace or the content store or something, and you see an issue like that, it may not necessarily be because of a, of a character issue, but also because the character is not compatible with that particular animation. So the way you can fix it is by taking steps like this, uh, using the layer editor, using the runtime composer, and you can also use the 3D motion layer editor as well. So let's go ahead and import in our eight angle character. Now we're going to update this dude that's on the screen right now. I'm just going to go to the layer editor there. So we're going to update this guy. Uh, but first of all, if I, uh, you can see if I turn this guy to 45 degrees, take a look at his arm. Two things happened here. One is that we still have the right arm behind the uh, torso. And the other thing is that the right arm is completely naked, which, which is because this arm is at the 90 degree profile right now. Uh, this is at 90 degrees. And the way you can test that, was we, have, we have this other dummy here for, uh, for animations. We have this guy that's kind of made of blocks right here. Uh, let's go to our actor tab. And where is our, uh, there you go, 3D reference guy. He's our cool 3D reference guy. So we can uh, select him. And you can see everything is at zero right now. If we move him to 45. All of his boxes changed to 45, and then we can apply that same animation to him. Uh, it was in talk, right? I believe. Uh, yep, talk up here and explain. So I can take a look and see. There we go. You see the 90 degree right there, and that's why the upper arm is at 90 degrees. That's why it is naked right there because we have not set the 90 degree profile uh, for this character yet. So let's go ahead and update him. Let's go into our character composer, and uh, whoops! Before we do that, oh, we have that guy selected. We don't want to replace him. Let's update this guy right here. Uh, but before we do that, let's go into uh, Draw Plus one more time. And I'm going to show you the full uh, eight angle police officer that I've created here. And you can see that I've only replaced these five angles. I haven't bothered with the top and the bottom because you don't really get very many animations that uh, have those replaced. But of course, if you want to be thorough, you can go ahead and replace all of those parts as well. Uh, I'm just going to use with these, uh, I'm going to start with these five angle profiles right here. One thing to uh, to look out for, let's uh, press control and scroll to zoom in, is I've kind of set some, uh, you know, some uh, rulers up here. You can see that uh, generally the upper uh, hip pivot point for the character is the same uh, along all, along the entire ruler there. You can see right there, right there, right there. 
and then uh, and then the uh, arm the elbow um, points are relatively the same they don't have to be exactly the same but you want to try and get them as close as possible just to maintain that symmetry and create a, a smoother animation within crazy talk animator so let's go ahead and export this one then uh, this is only five angle profiles and let's go file export export as flash and let's call this one five angle and save that and then we'll go into crazy talk animator and we will import in we'll go to our character composer and we'll import in the uh, five angle profile flash uh, file right there so five angle again just press ok update actor swift successful all right so we're good to go let's confirm our multi-angle settings right away uh, let's just go ok and we're good to go so let's take a look at all the angle profiles now we have 45 we even have 90 we have everything and you can see we already see the masking issue on the character's stomach so let's take a look uh, see if we can't fix it in the character composer so we go to the scene manager uh, joint mask select our character's hip just expand it up and we'll go to uh, 180 right here expand it right there and again 225 expand that and 270 expand it and 215 and we have to expand all of them again just to be safe you can see that uh, it's no issue right here but it's still too small so we're going to just be proactive and expand the uh, masking for the hip on all of the angles all right and then let's uh let's go back into our uh stage right here and take a look at our character so now you can see uh, his arm is there. His uh, right arm is still behind his uh, torso. And of course, we can fix that if we want to have it from this angle profile. I can select his uh, you know, right arm. Go ahead and uh, go to my layers right here and choose the right arm. And this time we want to select in front, center front of the torso right there. And so there we have the right arm in front of the upper torso. And the animation is good to go right there. And you can see that now we can actually just go to any angle profile. Uh, let's close down the layer editor here. Go to any angle profile, like uh, this one right here, and we can do the same thing. And you can see that maybe our layers are kind of messed up in this case as well, where we want our left hand there to be uh, obviously behind the uh, upper torso. So let's go ahead, the same thing in the layer editors. We can just go select our left hand and send the back of upper torso. And that should work just fine. We can just uh, test it out one more time. All right, there we're good to go. And that's pretty much how things work. I mean, you can just uh, send this guy to uh, any any, uh, any angle profile you want. You can go to uh, even this angle or even 90 degrees. So he's facing uh, facing totally backwards and explaining something to someone in front of him. Uh, we can even just uh, you know give him a whole 360. You can see we'd obviously want to change the layers there a little bit, but uh, again. It totally depends on your character and uh, the animation. So if we go to like Content Manager, let's try another animation here. Let's try a dance. We can just choose this uh, MJ dance right here. You can see, whoop, there we go. We have some f a few issues with that one. Uh, if we go back to, let's see, maybe uh, here. You can see that we have a weird issue with our, uh, our left leg being uh, in front of our uh, right thigh right there. So just for a moment, uh, I believe. Right about here. So before that happens, what I can do to fix that is again go to the layers, select my uh, left shin right there, and then make sure it's sent to the back of the right thigh. And then let's try that one more time. So you can see now we no longer have that problem. It's behind the right thigh. And if I press F3 and I go into the timeline, you can see that if I uh, go back on the layers here, this is where my layer uh, key has been set. And so if I want to, I can switch it back to at any point. If, for example, later on in the timeline, I need my left uh, shank there to be in front of my right thigh. And one more way you can fix things as well is if you uh, have our character here, for example, like in this position where his arm is kind of going through his, uh, uh, rather his forearm is kind of going through his head right there. What we can do to fix that is you can see before his forearm uh, his left forearm there starts going through his head. Let's take a look at our 3D motion key editor. And uh, we'll select the character first. And our 3D motion key editor is right here. 
And when we make edits to the 3D Motion Key Editor, we can open up our 3D Motion Key Track right here. And let's bring our character down a little bit, or uh, rather pan down a little bit here. And at this point, what I want to do before my edit is I want to just uh, double click in the 3D Motion Layer Editor Track to create a keyframe. And then here, you can see when our uh, further down, you can see that our character's uh, arm is kind of going in front of the hair, but the uh, hand is going behind. So one way we can fix this as well, and this is uh, as a as an alternative to uh, the layer editing, if the layer editing doesn't work, you can also do this as well. Take a look at his arm and his hands. If we want, we can take his uh, upper, maybe his upper arm right there, and use the E hotkey to bring up our rotation gizmo and kind of bring it further back. So you can see something like that could work as well, and you can, that adds another keyframe in the 3D motion layer track there. So if I play this back, if I go here and I play it back, you can see, oh, we want to do that a little bit earlier so we can bring that keyframe up. And there we go. So now we don't have a problem. Uh, well, maybe a little bit earlier. Let's try that. Maybe we also want to do that a little bit earlier for both of the keyframes. And again, this is just, uh, you know, trial and error. There you go. So now we have the Perfect setup where the uh, left arm is no longer going through the hair, or the forearm is no longer going through the hair, and we are good to go. But then again, if you see at the end of the uh, motion right there, it goes back. What we want to do is we want to maintain this uh, for as long as we can. So I'm going to right click on this uh, keyframe right here and copy it. And then at this point, where our character is coming out of his spin, maybe about here, I can add another keyframe. And then uh, right here, I can go ahead and select reset. What that'll do is that'll reset it back to its original position uh, in the motion clip. So let's go ahead and play that back and you can see now we're, we're good to go. So now we've kind of fixed a couple of things in that Michael Jackson motion. This is the custom character, the total custom character that I just created and brought in. And you can see that now I fixed a lot of the motions but there's one other thing that we could fix as well here. If we go back to uh, about this point right here, let's close down our motion key editor now. And I'm going to play back and, whoops, I think we're okay. Let's play back one more time. Oh, there we go. We caught the uh, foot. So the foot comes up right about there. And you can see we have that bottom angle foot right there. So let's press F3 and go into our timeline and see exactly which frame that happens. Uh, it's about this frame right here. And so one more way we can fix this is let's go into our sprite editor. Uh, this is the sprite editor right here. Let's select our character's foot. And let's go ahead and choose, uh, you can see now it's set to, uh, you need to select custom angle. So if I have custom angle, I can select this foot right here, but you can see that one looks a little bit like it's upside down. So let's go ahead and try a different angle. Let's try 180. And there we go. Uh, maybe that's a little bit crazy as well. Oh, sorry, not 180, uh, 315. Let's go down to 315 here. And you can see uh, we have the kind of a foot that's kind of cool, but it's in the wrong direction. So let's go ahead and get out of our spray editor here and let's go into the uh, 2D motion key editor and if I select my character's uh, foot here we'll go to the body here I want to select the character's foot and we can actually like transform it we can like rotate it around something like that uh, and we can even uh, stretch it and squash it to something like that and maybe move it up uh, to right about there and you can see that creates a uh, keyframe in the R foot transform track I forgot to mention the R foot S track here is for uh, switching the sprites so if I wanted to, uh, let's take a look at this frame, to this frame, to this frame. And uh, we want to switch the sprite back, obviously. Uh, maybe somewhere around, uh, I think it looks okay. Uh, maybe here we want to actually switch the sprite as well. Or at least have it uh, rotated around. So again, we're just going to do uh, give a little bit of that um, fixing there in the 2D motion key editor. So here. And maybe it's a little bit too Michael Jackson, maybe. I don't know. Um, let's see if it looks good when we play back. Okay, so he kind of just like, you know, does that little foot shake like that and then uh, goes back to uh, here. And at this point here, we want to go ahead and reset everything. So I'm going to go ahead here and reset it back to normal. And that's going to take it back to that uh, sprite right there. And then we want to, of course, change the sprite back as well, probably about this point. So let's go to our sprite editor. And sprite editor, I don't want to select custom angle anymore. I want to go ahead and uh, reset it back to normal. So then we see this, uh, we have that sort of uh, ankle shake and then, you know, popping out like that and back to normal. So everything is just fine. We did some 
Even though at first it didn't look quite correct in our character, we did three things. We did the layer editing for the arm on the previous motion. We did the 3D motion layer editing for our character's problem with his uh, left forearm going in front of his uh, hair. And then we also used the 2D motion key editor to do a, a couple of quick transforms to our sprite and actually replace the sprite itself. So now you can see uh, we've done like a few motion uh, key edits, both 2D and 3D. And you can see now we have a fairly decent looking motion and everything's been fixed. There might be a few uh, masking issues, but again, you already know how to fix the uh, masking issues and everything like that. So that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, the focus on this tutorial obviously wasn't really um, compiling and creating the characters in Draw Plus, or rather fixing the problems you'll find when you create your own custom uh, multi-angle character and try to animate them. So there's a lot of things you can fix with the animation tools that you don't really need to go back into Flash or back into Draw Plus and, uh, and adjust. Uh, generally, if the positioning of your character is okay, if you've got everything aligned properly, uh, it should be fine, and you can fix most of those uh, animation problems with the animation tools in Crazy Talk Animator. And this is because, obviously, not every character is going to work flawlessly with every animation. And so this is some useful tips for you to, uh, to use when fixing your animations for your custom characters. Uh, so again, hopefully you guys learned something in this tutorial, and thank you so much for watching.